Hello everyone, we're here at the National Maritime Museum in Sydney. My name is Jeff, I'm an education officer here. We have a very exciting project coming up soon. Uh, we're taking the replica of our ship HMV Endeavour to Lord Howe Island to look at something called the Transit of Venus. Uh, now we need an expert to help us find out all about that. So we have Carlos from the Sydney Observatory here and, uh, and he's going to help us work through what that means. So Carlos, what is the Transit of Venus? The transit of Venus is a rare astronomical event where, from the Earth's point of view, the planet Venus crosses in front of the Sun. It's a very rare event because it happens in pairs of eight years, but then it doesn't happen for a hundred years or so. So we are right now about to enter the second of a pair. That means that the next one is going to be in 2117. So we won't have the chance to see it, and probably our kids won't, and uh, maybe the kids of our kids will. In the 1600s, Johannes Kepler, a German astronomer, worked out the laws of planetary motion, which told us how the planets move. So we had a good idea of how the different planets related to each other in terms of motion, but we didn't have a scale for that. So we didn't know if the solar system was a big place, medium place, or small place. We needed one distance to set up the, the scale of the solar system. The distance between the Earth and the Sun is a very important measurement and the transit of Venus provides a mean to measure that. If we time the location of the planet Venus entering the Sun or exiting the Sun from different points of Earth, we can compare our measurements and the difference in time can tell us how far the Sun is. This was done finally in 1882 after many backs and forths, so the main reason for the transit of Venus was to find the distance between the Earth and the Sun. After having a good estimate of uh, the, the distance between the Earth and the Sun, the interest in the transit of Venus decreased a little bit because we thought no more science could be extracted from that. But in recent years, literally in the last 15 years or so, the search for planets outside our solar system became very, very important and we started finding more and more planets. We are in about 600 planets found so far. And one of the techniques we used to do that is to look at the star and wait for it to decrease in brightness a little bit, hinting us on the presence of a companion. That's called the transit method. What we have with the transit of Venus is a home version of the transit method that will allow us to see in a lot of detail information that later can be used to find planets in other stars. There's a, in order to have a transit, you need to be in a node, that means you need to be in the point of the Earth's orbit that crosses Venus's orbit. They are not perfectly aligned. So you need to be in that point. That already is a little bit difficult to match, and that's kind of the reason why it takes a long time. But when it matches, you happen to be slightly behind, you still see it, and later, eight years later, you're still hitting the same node, pretty much with Venus at the same time, slightly ahead of that. So they get to see this double pair. By the time, eight years later, you're in the same situation, you already moved away too much and you need to wait about 100 years for the same situation to happen in the opposite day. Well, we, we have learned a lot since Cook's time and uh, we have a lot of more uh, instruments to observe. Um, particularly, we have spectrographs that are basically um, a fairly simple object in concept that opens the light into a rainbow and lets us see details about the source of light. So, having spectrographs available, and high-definition spectrographs particularly, would let us see details on the transit that were not seen before. Only in the year 2004 we had enough instruments to, to see that. That gives us information on the atmosphere of Venus, for example, and information on the light of the Sun, and these are all uh, improvements that uh, couldn't have been possible 200 years ago or so. Events like the transit of Venus cannot be observed just from anywhere, or even if they are, you need to have options if it's cloudy, for example. So it requires a lot of logistics in terms of traveling to places, uh, securing the right place, and uh, this is a little bit easier now because we at least know where we're going. In the past, most of um, the places where the observations would be possible were not known, so they had to improvise and be ready for anything. And this is certainly a, a difficulty, and it proved to be a, a difficulty in the observations of Captain Cook. He alarmed, he, when he landed in, in Tahiti, uh, there were, uh, overall things were fine, but for example, one of the instruments was, was stolen the previous day of the transit. So chances were that they had done this long trip and prepared everything, and the last day they just lost an instrument. So 
the challenges are several and they're around the logistics of setting up the places to see the, the events. Um, the difficulties, even though we have more technology, are always present. And uh, for example, in, 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 in past times, when they were trying to observe the timing of the entrance of the planet, there's a particular effect called the black drop. The black drop is a little uh, black line that connects the planet with the background sun and makes it very difficult to know when the planet entered with a lot of accuracy. It's hard to measure the exact entry time because you have that little line that, that stops you from viewing it. So this is the type of difficulties you have because if you want to know, for example, the distance to the sun very accurately, you need to time that entrance very accurately and this black drop, for example, makes it really hard. So this is the type of difficulties we, we are finding. The current accepted distance to the Sun, which is the average of all the different distances across the elliptical orbit of the Earth around the Sun, is 149.6 million kilometers. That's the number we accept right now. It took a very long time to get it to this accuracy, but uh, that's, uh, that's the number we're currently uh, using. It's important to remember that looking at the sun can be very bad for your eyes, and especially in an event like this, that you will try to actually look and identify things in it. So, to avoid that, there are glasses that can protect your eyes, and they are actually fairly cheap, and they are easy to find. And uh, that will allow you to see, without telescopes, but with the right protection, the disk of the sun and the small disk of Venus crossing it, without any risk for your eyes. The Maritime Museum organized a trip to Lord Howe Island in the Endeavour, which is the replica of the ship Captain Cook used to, to visit Australia the first time. What we are planning to do is to sail for six days or five days, depending on the wind, and to set an observation post on Lord Howe Island. So it's a very exciting time because we are going to follow the steps of Captain Cook. Um, we're not going to go to Tahiti, but um, we're going to go to an island and we're going to set up an observation post there. I'm going to be the astronomer on the ship, which I'm very, very happy to do, I'm very honored. And um, we're going to be streaming live the images from the island uh, through the internet. So it's a, it's a modern twist on an old, on an old gig.